Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about standing waves. Uh, consider a string attached to attached on one end to a register board. So there will be a string and the one end of this string will be fixed. Fixed end. Fixed boundary. So you are going to send waves, uh, pulses on the string. If this string is vibrated with right frequency, so you are going to observe that there is a resultant wave pattern, which is called standing wave, that does not move along the string, only vibrates. So this waveform is known as standing wave. As you see, this blue wave, this blue wave, which is vibrating up and down, is a standing wave. It is vibrating up and down, but not moving. So right and left. This standing wave affects the composition of two waves. Wave 1 is traveling to the right. Wave 2 is traveling to the left. Two waves are moving in this string in opposite directions because this end is fixed. So one end is fixed, so because that end is fixed, so incoming incident waves moving to the right is reflected and then uh, that's why while they are passing through each other, these two waves, wave 1 and wave 2, wave, while they are passing through each other, they interfere one another and form a standing wave, will form a wave, wave pattern which is only vibrating but not moving, known as standing wave. In standing waves, uh, two waves uh, will move in opposite directions, so the waves moving towards the fixed end and the waves reflected from the fixed end overlap and interfere constructively and destructively at different regions of the string. This uh, simulation is a good example uh, uh, for uh, uh, standing waves. Form a standing wave by, um, so there will be some so that the, a waves wave moving on this string. This end is fixed. And reflects. So and after the waves arrive, this fixed one, they will be reflected. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Now so here we can see we're creating a continuous up and down. Phase are on the approaching to the fixed boundary. Which causes a continuous traveling wave, which is the red wave here, to travel towards this boundary. And um, so that this wave is represented by the red wave. What we're going to do, what's going to happen at the boundary is we're going to get an inversion of the wave and reflection. So when these waves arrive to the fixed point, they will be inverted. They will reflect back. Slow this down while it's happening. So here we can see that the first wave, uh, part of the wave, is just about to arrive at the boundary, and it reflects and inverts. This blue and ray is the, the blue ray is representing the wave which is reflected and inverted, the and this blue and red and starts interfering. Results in a kind of cancellation of parts of the wave, so they're, they're interfering as per the principle of superposition. And when they are identical, as you see, they completely cancel each other right we'll now. Speed the up again. And, and what we can see is as the this starts interfering constructively wave, right now, completely constructive. We have the conditions then for completely destructive, completely constructive, completely destructive, and so on. Um, and resultant wave pattern is continuously changing from a maximum amplitude to a zero amplitude again to maximum in opposite direction. Destructive uh, interview is zero, way, constructive point, interview maximum. Which is just the superposition of the two. Uh, so these waves two waves, one of, of them is moving to the right, the other one is moving to the left, frequency. after reflection, uh, continuously interfering and form and because a the, um, because standing the wave. Because the change that happens at the boundary, we always end up with a node at the fixed boundary. That's a boundary condition for a standing wave on a string. If we have a fixed boundary, the two waves will always interfere destructively there. As you can see, the blue wave is always exactly the negative of the red wave. Um, and so that means that there will never be any displacement at the fixed boundary. So we will always have a node there. Okay, as you see, standing wave consists of alternating regions of constructive and destructive interference are also. There are two waves, one of them is moving to the right, the other one is moving to the left uh, after the reflection from the fixed boundary, and then they interfere, and according to principle of superposition. 
and this is a good video and for for this demonstration how I standing wave can marker, be formed on a marker smile at your admiring uh, audience spring. and uh, we will be demonstrating transverse standing waves i'll also demonstrate traveling uh, transverse waves here's a traveling wave i'm starting the wave by creating a disturbance here with my hand that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So I'll move my hand up and down, and you'll see that the little bump in the spring travels from me to Parker, and then back to me again. And you'll notice that when the wave hits Parker's hands, because hand, he's holding it firmly, what was a peak heading toward him converts itself into a valley as it bounces off of his hands. So then a standing wave is where you pick a frequency that matches the length of the string in such a way that the, the waves created from my side of the string and bouncing off of Parker's uh, coincide with each other and reinforce each other to create a standing wave pattern. The um, lowest frequency standing wave pattern is this one. It's called mode It is the M first um, one, first um, like the first order standing wave. Or the first harmonic. As you see it is moving or up and down, words, only vibrate up and down. The fundamental mode. It's the lowest So this is the produce as lowest frequency longest wavelength. First standing wave. It's a transverse standing wave. If I double the frequency of that mode, then he's going to catch the second one. Yes, yeah, second order standing wave is this. Harmonic or second mode, and sometimes called the first overtone. And this one, if you'll notice, is going twice as fast as the fundamental mode. So the frequency of this uh, standing wave will be twice exactly of the halfway between first Parker order standing wave. And that's a node where, where there's approximately no motion going on. So now I'm going to try and triple the frequency and get a standing wave pattern that coincides with the third harmonic or second overtone. And he's going um, to triple the frequency and he's going to try to catch the third harmonic or third order standing wave, which has. Try again. Okay, I think I've got it approximately yeah. now. This is third order, standing wave, and so on. So when uh, uh, there are some special points on a standing wave which do not vibrate, as you see, this point, that point, they don't vibrate. These points are called nodes. Because at these points, these two waves, one of them is moving to the right, the other one is moving to the left, they always destructively interfere at these points. So destructively interfere the uh, vector addition of the displacement of the first wave and second wave will be zero so these points are called nodes the point at which two waves cancel are called nodes no vibration at the nodes they don't vibrate but being wave just between these two nodes adjacent solid nodes the string vibrates with the largest amplitude these points are called antinodes as you see this point is vibrating with the largest amplitude that point is also vibrating with largest amplitude this point is also vibrating with largest amplitude. So between every e successive two successive nodes, there's one node, one point vibrating with the largest amplitude, known as anti nodes. And if you study the pattern of the standing waves, uh, this is the first time, uh, first standing wave or first order standing wave. So first order standing wave uh, has two notes because these uh, both ends uh, of the string is fixed they don't uh, vibrate and between these two notes there is one point uh, vibrate with the largest amplitude which is known as ng note and this shape this shape this figure is known as a loop so first order standing will have just a single loop and uh, length of the this uh, uh, hula hoop is always equal to lambda over 2 because its shape is similar to a pulse up or a pulse down so remember a full wave is composed of two pulses one pulse up 
1 pulse down, it becomes in lambda. So that's why 1 pulse, length of the 1 pulse is going to be lambda over 2. That's why 1 loop will always have a length which is equal to half of the wavelength. And uh, one more thing, uh, in here two, two nodes exist, but one anti-node exists. So as you see, number of nodes is one greater than number of uh, anti-nodes. And this second order standing wave. In second order standing waves, uh, these uh, are the nodes. There are one, two, three nodes uh, and two anti-nodes. Again, number of nodes are one uh, greater than number of antinodes. Again, the length of each uh, loop is going to be the uh, lambda over 2. Number of antinodes is always equal to number of loops. There are There is one loop in here, one antinode. There are two loops in here, two antinodes. If we see the all, if you want to see the all the patterns produced by a standing wave, so we can say that if this is the length of the string on which we produce standing wave length is L, this is the first harmonic or first order standing wave where, and this is the second order standing wave, this is the third order standing wave, this is the fourth order standing wave. So in first order standing, there is only one loop. In second order standing wave, there are two loops, one loop in here, second loop is in there. In third order standing wave, there are three loops. In fourth order standing wave, there are two uh, four loops. And the distance between two successive nodes and or two successive antinodes is also, always one half of the la uh, wavelength lambda over two. So this uh, this is one node. This is another node. From node to node, that distance is equal to lambda over two. Or this is one node. This is another node. This is third node. So from node to node, that distance is equal to lambda over two. And from one antinode to another, next antinode, also distance is equal to lambda over two. And uh, in this case, the length of the string, for example, in the first one, when in the first harmonic, length of the string is equal to lambda over two, but in the second harmonic, length of the string is equal to lambda over two plus lambda over two, which makes one lambda. In third order standing wave, there are three loops, as you see, one, two, three, and uh, three loops, third order, and each loop has a length, which is called a lambda over two, lambda over two, lambda over two. So total length of the string is going to be 1.5 lambda. And the fourth order standing wave, so the lambda over two, lambda over two, lambda over 2 and again lambda over 2 so there are four lambda over 2 total length is going to be 2 lambda so the length of the string in the first order standing way 0.5 lambda second order 1 lambda third order 1.5 lambda in fourth order 2 lambda and it's going like this fifth order 2.5 lambda sixth order 3 lambda and so on so as we said standing waves formed at specific wavelengths at specific frequencies and uh, we can calculate uh, even uh, at what wavelengths this standing wave can be found can be uh, can be uh, produced by using this equation in here n is number of loops which is at the same time is equal to number of antinodes also order of standing wave first order second order third order and so on l is the length of the string how that from one end to the other end so for what is length uh, then lambda n is representing the wavelength of the wave which produce standing wave on that string. So now we are going to uh, solve a problem, a section of question. A stretched, stretched string fixed at both ends is 2 meter long. This is the length of the string, L. What are three, pass, uh, three wavelengths that will produce standing wave on this string? We are going to calculate three wavelengths uh, which can produce standing wave on this string. So uh, let's calculate at the first order, second order, and is equal to three third order standing waves. At what wavelengths we can produce these standing waves? So equation for calculating the wavelength of this uh, wave uh, which can produce standing wave on the string is 2L over N. So for the first order standing wave, it's going to be 2, length is equal to 2, 2 times 2 divided by N is equal to 1. 
2 times 2, which is 4 meters. So if the wavelength of the wave which produced on this uh, 2 meter long string is 4 meter, then the first order standing wave is produced. So its pattern is going to be something like this. So first order standing wave will be like this. This pattern will be produced if a wave uh, on this uh, string is produced by a wavelength of 4 meters. And let's go on. Let's calculate the uh, lambda 2. So which wavelength produces second order standing wave? 2L, 2 times 2 divided by n is equal to 2, which is 2 meters. So the wavelength of the wave which produces second order standing wave is going to be 2 meters. So if we draw it, it's going to be second order standing wave will have a shape like this. Let's draw it. So, second order standing wave, and in this case, length of the string is equal to wavelength of the wave. And for the third order, let's calculate it, lambda 3, 2 times 2 divided by 3, which is 4 over 3, 1.33 meters. If a wave whose wavelength is 1.33 meters is produced on this string, so you are going to calculate, you are going to uh, form the third order standing wave, its shape is going to be something like this. Okay, this is the third order standing wave, and so on. These uh, wavelengths, 4 meters, produces first order standing wave. 2 meters of the wavelength produces second order standing wave. 1.33 meters uh, wave produces a third order standing wave, and so on. And name at least one wavelength that would not produce a standing wave pattern. So any number, any wavelength, any length, uh, wavelength between these two, with these numbers cannot produce a standing wave. For example, if I represent these wavelengths on a line, so this is 4 meters, this is 2 meters, this is 1.33 meters. Only these numbers produce a standing wave. Any number between these two cannot, cannot produce a standing wave. So it's still a number between 2 and 4, for example, 2.5 cannot, 2.3 cannot, 3.5 cannot. They cannot produce standing wave, 3.6 cannot. And any number between 2 and 4, 2 and 4 not included, cannot produce a standing wave. Or any number between 1.33 to 2, 2 cannot produce cannot produce standing wave. Uh, standing wave. We can continue. Only these numbers, these numbers produce standing wave, 4 meters, 2 meters, 1.23 meters, but numbers different than them, between the numbers between these two values cannot produce a standing wave pattern. So this is all about uh, standing waves and, and this is all about the chapter 3. See you next lesson.